Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga program. And today we're going to do ScreamerNet. ScreamerNet. Everybody knows what I mean when I say ScreamerNet. This computer will rule the world. ScreamerNet is the render cow or render node program for Lightwave 3D. So when you're a 3D artist and you're doing amazing 3D things, you go ahead and create 3D animations. The problem is they take a long time to render, right? Because for every single second of animation that plays on the screen, you have to have, well, ideally up to at least 30 frames to make one second. So it takes a lot of rendering, a lot of animation time. So Lightwave comes with this really, really handy program called ScreamerNet. A couple versions, the original version and a newer version. Even back in the Amiga, we had the newer version. This newer version, by the way, is still available today for the current version of Lightwave. Isn't that crazy? That's kind of why how this wasn't so hard for me to figure out because a lot of it is still exactly the same. So what I'm showing you here on the Amiga version, uh, you know what? It's actually still kind of relevant on the PC version or the Mac version that's out right now. Are you serious? Here's the front end. This is the controller software. This is gonna tell those nodes what to do. So like you go say add scene to list, you go pick a scene like this lovely little escape part two thing scene here, there you go. So it's been told what to do and you can go ahead and add more scenes if you want. Now keep in mind though, once you've added all your scenes and you actually tell it to go scream or render, you're kind of done. You can't add, you can't take away. You just need to wait for it to finish doing what it's doing. What about CPUs? Well, how do you get the little render node CPUs for this render networking thing to work? That's where we got to run back over to Workbench. You're doing network rendering with networked Amigas, you need to have a network. That's not what this video is about. Uh, this video assumes you know how to get your Amigas networked. My 1200, of course, is networked. And yes, the 3000 way over there is networked as well. Those are gonna be our two example render nodes in this video. So you go ahead and fire up the shell, and I'm gonna go ahead and activate that render command. You need to assign Lightwave uh, when you run it the first time ever, if you've ever copied it over, it'll yell at you for an assign. So make sure your light waves are all assigned and installed. Again, this assumes you have a basic light wave install figured out. An important tip, what I'm gonna show you and the reason this makes this kind of light wave network, screamer net rendering so simple, you need to have light wave installed on all of your computers the exact same way. That's the one requirement of my method that I'm gonna show you. The reason this method is so simple is because the 3000 behind me and this 1200 have Lightwave installed the same way. They're both installed in work partition in the Lightwave folder, and they use the same exact files. And that is why this works. I'll go in here and type in our toaster, which will be assigned to work Lightwave. So that takes us right there. And then there's a little tiny program in there called lwsn.fp. That is the render node or render cow, whatever term you want to use for Lightwave. And as you can see right there, it's telling us, well, hey, wait a minute, there's a bunch of stuff missing. You can't just type that and expect it to work. Correct, you do need to know the string. So there's a dash one and a dash two, okay? The dash two means the ScreamerNet two. So if we go back to Lightwave here, that's that ScreamerNet two up there. So that's the version we're using. That's the more modern, I would say simpler version, okay? And what we gotta do is let it know then. So we're gonna do dash two to let it know we're doing ScreamerNet two. And then it says job file, reply file. So these are little text files that you can create in the folder. So if we go to work, Lightwave, if you look in there, you're gonna see an ACK1 and a job1. So those are the little text files or empty files that you can create. Those are the control files the Screamer software is gonna use. It's gonna read and write to those to update itself with what these render nodes are doing. I called that job1 and ACK1 is because I'm gonna have, guess what, more than one render node. So you need to have a version of those files for every render node you're gonna have. So in this case, we have the 3000 and the 1200, right? So I need a job one, ACK one, and I need a job two, ACK two. So Q, you're saying job one and ACK two, that's a little confusing. I do see that it says job file here and reply file. Why is the, uh, I mean, I get that when you say job one, that must be the job file. So what is ACK? Is that, is that reply? Yes, it is. Why the file isn't called REP for reply? Why is it called ACK? Well, because it's the acknowledgement file. 
the reply file. Get it? That's why it's named that way. So I'm going to type in job one space ack one. Now watch what's going to happen when I hit enter. Boom. It's going to set the directory to the content, which is Q files, Lightwave. Now it's getting that information. Ignore that for a minute. It's getting that information because my Lightwave content and all the Amigas that are doing this are set to the same location. It's the network location in my case, which in your case, it should be too. Ideally, you should run all of your different light waves on your different Amigas should ideally be working from a network shared content structure. That way you don't have to keep cloning or duplicating all of your files across all of your Amigas. That would be really annoying. And as well in the ScreamerNet command area, the command directory is also set to that same exact location. And again, that is for simplicity's sake. This is for my example. I am trying to keep things as simple as possible. I, I you know, I'm not industrial light and magic over here. I'm a guy with a couple of Amigas and it'd be nice to have some network rendering going, but I don't, I don't need to get all hyper detailed with this. So I want it as simple as possible. There you go. Commands directory is set to the same directory as the content directory. That's important to keep things simple. That way, when I run that node, when I run that command, it automatically knows, oh yeah, cool. Okay. That's where I'm at. Now the reason it says can't open job file is because it hasn't been told anything yet. So let's go over here and say screamer init. And it's going to say checking for CPUs and look at that. Boom. It found that one ready. And if we go back over here to workbench, no longer does it say can't open job file. Now it's letting me know that it found that one CPU. Thank you very much for that, by the way, as you can see there, now it says wait instead of can't open file. But Q, 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 you said we had a 3000 behind us. Why is it only showing one computer? So now we're over here on the 3000. We've got some prior attempts at my foolishness up here. Boom. There you go. And now the 3000s act, it's job to act to has started and it is also saying a knit, a knit, a knit. It doesn't know what's going on because I need to come back over here and do a screamer, a knit again. And now it's good. Oh, look at that. Now it sees node one and node two, the 3000. Yay. Look at that. I'll wait for it to pop up. Now it says it detected two. So yeah, you could keep doing this. If you had more Amigas, make sure the Lightwave install is exactly the same on both. Okay. So that it keeps things simple and that way when the node launches, it'll be looking in the same spot for all the files it needs. Now you're going to see that says a question mark right there. That's because nothing's happened. I, I, I did that init again and it's like going, why did, why did you do that? I was already, I was reporting, I was already ready. So what we're going to do just to be clean is say screamer shutdown. And now I'm going to tell everybody to turn off. Okay. Boom. I just told all the nodes to turn off because I want to make sure this is nice and clean when I do this. So now they're all back. They're all quit. See how it says quit. So I'm going to go up arrow and fire that one off again. We're going to come back over to 3000. We're going to go up arrow. We're going to fire that one off again. I just want everyone to be on the same page for this example video to keep things simple. So there we go. They're all back on the same page again. Come back over here, screamer init. So now we should get a, a much more conventional status of ready, ready. Yep. But you saw how easy it was to do a screamer shutdown, by the way, as long as they're not rendering, shutting those nodes down is pretty simple. The problem is once you start rendering, you can't just shut down. You first need here. I'll show you. So we'll go ahead and add a scene to the list and we'll put this on here. So let's say you've, you built up a list, by the way, if you only have one Amiga, but you want to do a bunch of rendering in Lightwave, and you don't want to have to wait around for the scene to finish, come back up, load the scene, the next scene, render it, set an alarm or a reminder, come back up, load the next scene. You can queue up a bunch of jobs. You can queue up to eight jobs right here and you can add them all of them up. You can hit the, the screamer render button, go, go surfing, go duck hunting, whatever it is you do, you'll come back and the, the, hopefully they'll be done. So yeah, the screamer software is also a great render queue software, even for just one Amiga. Obviously it works best with network Amigas because you have many Amigas, but it does work with just a single Amiga. And, and by the way, you don't need a network stack to use ScreamerNet if you're just going to use it on this Amiga. So that's a handy little feature. So go ahead and click screamer render and there it goes. Now it says loading. And if we go back to workbench, you'll see right there that it says it's loading and over on the 3000 behind us, it'll start doing the same thing, albeit a bit slower. And now the status there, it says rendering frame one. And there you go. There's the process. There you go. Amiga two, the 3000 is now loading. We go back to workbench. You can see right here, the, look at that. Pi storm is just ripping through that, isn't it? Oh yeah. Oof. That's quick. Was that fast? I thought that was fast. Was it fast? The 3000 060 is going to be fast, but it's not going to be that fast. And you'll see that pretty quickly here. As you're watching the status updates, you'll see that the Pi storm Amiga will be letting you know that, Hey, I'm already on frame four or five and 
the 3000 is still on frame two. My point is, once we get the 3000 loaded and actually rendering here, I'll, I'll show you my next point. So there you go. So now the 3000 is reporting that it's it's ready to go and now it's rendering. Pi Storm is already on frame three, which is technically its second frame. It started with frame one and now it's on frame three. But when you're in this state and you see that busy icon of Lightwave, you're locked out of Lightwave. You can't do anything in Lightwave right now while it's doing this. So that's why you kind of, you have to dedicate that machine to be like your screamer net machine. It has to do all your screamer net stuff. And it's just gonna sit here and do this until, the, until your list is done. And when your list is done, it'll be done. So what you can do though, one of the commands you do have the ability to do is hit the escape key, okay? When you hit escape, that is gonna tell screamer net that I'm done rendering. And as soon as frames finish rendering, it'll go back to a wait state. The Pi Storm is done, the 3000 is not. And what's gonna happen here is you can go around and play in Lightwave, you can do things, but that 3000 is still rendering behind us. And it's gonna be rendering for some time because like I said, the 060 is not gonna be as fast. And that's fine. If you don't quit Lightwave, nothing bad is gonna happen. If you do quit Lightwave, nothing bad is gonna happen. If I quit Lightwave right now, it's not like the 3000 behind me is gonna go, oh my gosh, what happened? It's just gonna keep rendering because it doesn't know, it's not that smart. This is a very dumb program. It, it, it takes basic commands and then waits for the next command. So it's just gonna keep rendering that frame, it's gonna save the frame in the 3000 and it's gonna quit. It'll try to report back to, to home base here that hey, I finished rendering and if I have quit Lightwave, it'll be like, oh, okay, I, I guess nothing's happening now. If you wanna be polite and you want to uh, shut everything down the right way, you need to wait for that 3000 to finish rendering. If you wait for the 3000 to finish rendering, its status will revert to ready and now you can do screamer shutdown and end everything the polite way. Now, what happens if you hit Screamer Shutdown while a computer is still rendering? It's gonna warn you. Are you sure you wanna shut these down? Yes. Now look what happens. We get, we get a return of the busy icon. And now it says waiting for CPUs to quit LWSN. And guess what? That does not force quit the 3000. It is still gonna be rendering. In fact, we look over here. Yeah, it's still rendering and it's gonna keep rendering. It will not stop until it is done rendering. That is not a force quit button. That is just a, hey, when the CPUs are done rendering, go ahead and shut those render nodes down and that's what it will do. It'll end them. And then you can quit Lightwave and you can turn the machines off and have a lovely rest of your evening. That's the polite way. Keep in mind in any step what I've talked about, you can quit Lightwave, you can reboot your Amigas, you can turn them off. You're not gonna destroy anything. It's not gonna ruin your scene files. It's not gonna break anything. It's not gonna corrupt your hard drives. Well, unless you turn your Amigas off while they're saving a frame, then you might have a problem. But in my case, they're all saving frames to a network uh, drive location, which is protected from that anyway, because it's a modern NAS that they're writing to. But if you were like writing to, uh, hey, you know, because these Amigas are networked, you might be rendering to uh, a local frame or a local drive or share on the Amiga, right? And if you turned an Amiga off or did a reboot as it was writing that frame to the, the computer and you weren't running one of the new fancier uh, file systems, yeah, you might corrupt your Amiga that way. Anyway, enough of that rant. My point is you can safely kill and terminate ScreamerNet at any time and just start all over again, right? You don't have to wait for that 3000 to finish rendering. If I wanted to right now, unfortunately, yeah, Lightwave is trapped. I can't do anything else while it's waiting. I mean, I can go out to Workbench if I want to, but it's still gonna be back there chewing up memory, doing its thing. Yes, there are some like force kill programs for uh, Workbench you can install that could kill that and terminate that process for me. Or, you know, three finger salute and get rid of it. You can do it that way. There you go. That is the simple process, how I handle ScreamerNet on Amigas. And there you go. It's that simple. I've got lwsn.fp-2 job one act one. And I'm running those from each Amiga local, uh, the local install, so work Lightwave. And because Lightwave is installed the same way on all the computers, it's it's all the same. To, 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 as far as ScreamerNet's concerned, everything's exactly the same. The content and the command directory are on the network share, okay? And that's okay, so we'll go back now. Yeah, see now that now that, that 3000 is finished rendering, look at this, everything's freed up, reset, back to normal, screamer net shut down, it's like we never even started this thing. But yeah, because the command directory is set to the same location as my content directory, then it just makes everything easy. You could set this command directory to work Lightwave, just like where I'm actually launching the, the, the screamer net program, screamer net node from. You could do that because, why? Because every computer has Lightwave installed the exact same way. That wouldn't be a problem. I just tend not to do that. I tend to keep everything, as far as the command directory and the contact directory go, I keep it on the, net, on the network location, and then I just run the render node locally 
from its little local install folder. And again, every node, because it has LightWave installed the same way, is gonna use all the LightWave plugins and files from its local location to render the frames, whatever it's being told by the uh, ScreamerNet software. I hope that made sense. Uh, I know I kind of rambled through this pretty quickly, but again, it, it's, just, it's, a, it's fairly simple uh, if you do it this way. There are other ways to do this. There's a whole standalone ScreamerNet program you, that you can run that tries to configure nodes based on whether they're in a network location or not. That's a whole other massive weird ball of Doritos that I don't want to get involved in. So this is what I do. I'm showing you how I do it on the Amigas. And this, you know, if I had more of a Amiga set up again, I could do three or four or five this way. Even if you only have one Amiga, there's nothing stopping you from queuing up a nice big render list over the week and clicking the uh, Screamer render button and then being able to come back days later, weeks later and have it all done. And that way you don't have to hang out. I mean, if you don't do it that way, otherwise, yeah, you're doing the whole render automatic, clicking okay, and then just waiting, right? And then you have to know to come back and load the next scene. That sucks. So using even the network rendering as a, like a local network render queue uh, is, a, is a much better way to do it. Anyway, that's it. Screamer net rendering on the Amiga. All right, I'm done with this video.